Hey guys, we're going to do a quick review video about the brain. I'm going to cover the brain parts, the functions, and where they're located in the brain. I suggest downloading the 3D Brain app. It's free on um, just any any um, like app store. It's free. And it looks kind of like this. I'm actually on g2conline.org, which is a website that has something really similar. It's a lot neater on your phone, though, so I suggest... Um, looking at it on your phone, I am going to start at the base of the brain at the brainstem. So let me isolate my brainstem here. So here we've got the brainstem. This part of the brain is the essential functions. So these are the, the, the heart rate, the breathing, the, um, the parts of, of, of you that you need very much for life functions. Um, we're going to talk specifically though about the different parts. So we're going to start with the part you can't see, and they actually don't have a label for it on this. It goes up through the center here. It doesn't even have a label. It's called the reticular formation. It's actually inside of these two parts. It's kind of like a tube that's encased by the medulla and the pons. It's called the reticular formation. Um, it's, its function is um, consciousness and your body's alertness. Um, and so that is a really important function. That's what, what gives you awareness. Um, and so that's the reticular formation. And then we're going to move to the parts we can see. So here is the medulla oblongata. That is this pink part right here. It is at the very base of the brainstem. This part of the brain is responsible for heart rate and, and breathing. Um, those are, are various central functions. Um, we're going to move up to the pons. This right here, this is pons. Pons starts with the P, and you can see this kind of looks like a P. So this is the top of the P here, the pons. Um, the pons is responsible for sleep. Um, so if you think of pons and has a bunch of Z's at the end, if you're catching Z's, you're sleeping. So pons is responsible for sleep. Um, it also, I think it kind of looks like an Adam's apple. So if that was a throat, it looks like an Adam's apple. Um, this part here is the midbrain. We aren't really going to focus on the midbrain in class, but that part of the brain just sits right above the pons. So we're going to move up to the thalamus, which sits right on top of the brainstem. There we go. The thalamus kind of looks a little bit like, I think it looks like fists. If you were to um, hold your fists up like this, that is kind of like what the thalamus looks like. It's got two parts, these two like round shaped structures there. The thalamus, they say, is like the sensory switchboard. So as your senses come in, your sensations come in, it goes to the inner part of your brain, the thalamus, and your thalamus sends it out to the rest of the brain to process. So we call that the sensory switchboard. Um, there's some other functions um, like attention and timing and, and movement, but I think if you know that this is the sensory switchboard, it's this place that sends um, information out, then I think that you'll be good. So let's move to the structure that surrounds the thalamus, and this is called the limbic system. And the limbic system is, here's, we're looking at it from the back here. It's kind of like arms that come out and like hold on to the thalamus. You can't see the thal thalamus anymore because they've taken it away, but you can see it's like arms that are stretching out and like encasing the thalamus. Uh, the limbic system is a group of structures. It's not one structure and they have a bunch of different functions and so I'll separate it by part. So we're going to isolate that green part right there. It is called the hippocampus. Let me um, there we go. So the hippocampus, this is like the arm that is stretching out. So it's like this. There's two of them. And the hippocampus is what is, is, is controlling your um, long-term memory storage and processing. And so I think that this one's really easy to remember because if you think of hippocampus, you will always remember if you see a hippo on campus, then that will remind you that your hippocampus is for long-term memory because a hippo on campus is going to stay in your long-term memory. So that's your hippocampus. We're going to move to these little dots on the ends here. These are the amygdala. And so you can see they're kind of like almost like the fists right there on the ends of the arms. Um, they say they're kind of almond shaped. Um, this part of the brain is responsible for um, the emotions that you feel in a fight or flight situation. So if you're really stressed, 
whether that's like nervous stress or fear stress, you're, you know, you're scared, those types of feelings, those emotional feelings are what's controlled by the amygdala. And those are fear, aggression, and anger. And so um, the amygdala is known to control fear, aggression, and anger. We're going to go to the hypothalamus now. And the hypothalamus is also a part of the limbic system. It's kind of triangular. It sits in front of the thalamus, you can see right there. It's that kind of like greenish part of the brain right there. The thalamus is responsible for, um, um, I'd like to call them like the drives. So this is um, your, your hunger, you're driven to eat, your thirst, you're driven to drink, um, your sexual activity. Um, those are your three, like they say, your basic drives. And it has some other functions like body temperature um, and things like that. But I like to think of it as your drives, the things you must have, the hypothalamus, the things you must have. Um, Okay, so we're going to move to the outer part of the brain now. Okay, so I've got my outer part of my brain. This is called the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the part of the brain that um, you see in pictures. It's like this, like, lumpy looking. It's got ridges and valleys, and that's the cerebrum. It's that whole outer layer. This is where you have higher order thinking, complex thought processes. Um, these things are happening up here. So it's separated into four lobes. We've got the frontal lobe, which the frontal lobe is responsible for um, judgment, decision making, um, speaking and movement. We've got this in the back, the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is responsible for mental mapping, spatial awareness, um, processing your senses. Um, our temporal lobe, this part of the brain is, is responsible for... Um, hearing and memory and facial recognition. Um, it's right here in your where your temples are. We've got occipital lobe in the back and the occipital lobe. This is responsible for, right, here we go. So the occipital lobe is responsible for visual um, understanding. So if you hear people say they got eyes in the back of your head, you do. That's where your vision is processed in your occipital lobe. Um, I didn't mention this earlier. This is not a part of the cerebrum, but the underneath part of the brain is called your cerebellum. Um, so I'm looking at the brain upside down here. It's kind of like the seat that the brain sits on. This is the part of the brain that's responsible for movement. And so if you think of a bell, you have to move your hand to ring a bell. And so your cerebellum is moving your hand. It is responsible for voluntary movement. So that was the cere cerebellum. And so here we've got this outer layer, let me go back this way. This is your cerebrum, and those are the lobes of the cerebrum. Now I'm going to tell you about a few of the parts that, uh, that exist on the lobes that are important. Okay, so I've got my frontal lobe isolated here, and it, this is actually the left side, and that's important. So the left side of the brain has a, a part called the Broca's area, and that's here. It's in purple, and it is only in the, the left side of the frontal lobe. Broca's area is responsible for um, the ability to make and, and produce speech, and um, that's right here in purple. It's really small. Uh, there are some other parts of the frontal lobe that you should know about. There's also the motor cortex, so here is, it's here in yellow. And this is a part of the frontal lobe which has um, control over uh, movements. And so even though we know the cerebellum, which is down here, controls voluntary movement, there is part of the brain that also controls movement in the frontal lobe, which is up here in the motor cortex. There's also something called the prefrontal cortex, so we're still in the frontal lobe, which happens up here, um, the prefrontal cortex. This part is the part of the frontal lobe that is specific to decision making. So they say this part of the brain actually isn't fully developed um, until adulthood. And so um, they believe that adolescents make riskier decisions than adults would due to the um, the frontal, the prefrontal cortex not yet being fully developed, the decision making and judgment judgment-making part of the brain. Okay, now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about some specific parts of the other lobes. 
Okay, so now we've isolated the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is back here, kind of like on the like, top of your head back here. So the parietal lobe has some different colors here, and the reason is they have made um, the somatosensory cortex um, just a different color so you can see this whole thing is the parietal lobe here, but this part right here is is special in that this is controlling or um, um, has the ability to interpret the sensations, especially touch as one of them. And so um, this is where those sensations are going to here to be processed. So that's important there, that stripe. And we can't see this here. I showed this to you just a moment ago. Right here, we've got the motor cortex from the frontal lobe. They're kind of backing up to each other. Anyway, this is the parietal lobe here. Okay, so um, I'll show you just a couple more things that you need to know about the lobes. Okay, now this nice and colorful piece is the temporal lobe. I said that was right there next to your temples. And um, there's one part on here that you do need to know. It's this part in this golden color. It's called Wernicke's area. And Wernicke's area is responsible for the ability to make meaning in language. So Broca's area, which was in the frontal lobe, um, helps you produce it. Uh, but Wernicke's area gives speech and language meaning or the ability to, to make comprehensible language. And so that is the last part of the brain that you need to know. So hopefully this helps you understand the functions of the brain, the parts, and um, where they're located. Um, let me know if you need anything else or if you need any help.